Marshall. I'm the director of programs here at the Cape Ann Museum, and thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Um, we are very pleased to present a program today with Bonnie Hurd Smith. Um, she's going to be talking about her book, uh, Mingling Souls Upon Paper, an 18th Century Love Story, which was published last year. Um, at the conclusion of her talk, which will last about 45 minutes or so, there will be time to ask some questions. And then we will all reconvene upstairs if you're interested for a book signing. And there are also copies of that book available for purchase at the reception desk. Mingling Souls Upon Paper traces, through Judith Sargent's personal letters, the 14-year friendship of 18th century essayist and Gloucester native Judith Sargent Murray and Universalist preacher John Murray, and their subsequent marriage of 27 years. Uh, Bonnie has been studying Judith Sargent Murray for 20 years herself. She's written, designed, and self-published three books on Murray's letters. She's published four monographs of her essays and created a website for the Judith Sargent Murray Society, which she founded. Bonnie's also served as executive director for the Ipswich Historical Society, president of the Sargent House Museum, and director of the Boston Women's Heritage Trail. She's currently working on two new books, and hopefully she'll talk a little bit about those at the end. Uh, Judith Sargent Murray Papers and Letters Book Three, and the Ipswich Women's Heritage Trail. So I hope you enjoy today's program, and please join me in welcoming Bonnie Hurd Smith. Thank you. so happy to be here, and I see so many familiar faces. It's like old home week. I want to in pizza and some wine, and we can all sit and hang out. This is really terrific. I'm just delighted. And I want to start by, of course, thanking Cape Ann Museum for inviting me, and to acknowledge, in particular, Stephanie Buck, the librarian here, who has been enormously helpful to me in so many ways with my work. Uh, you can't do this kind of work without people like Stephanie Buck, and she is really outstanding. So to begin with, I have a feeling that more than most audiences, some of you in this room have at least heard of these two people. Most people have never heard of them, but if they have, they know that she was an essayist and that he is considered the father of American universalism. But even for people who know those basic facts about those two, they don't know about their personal stories, and they don't know in particular about their love story, which is why I wrote this book. We have no way of knowing what actually happened when Judith and John first met on an early November day in 1774 in Gloucester. John Murray was 33 years old, he had been promoting the concepts of universal salvation and dismantling the dark and gloomy promises of Calvinism throughout the colonies as an itinerant preacher for almost four years. He was from England, a protege of James Relly, who was considered the founder of universalism, a widower who had lost his infant son, someone who considered himself a failure to God because he had fallen into debt felt unworthy to preach, which he had started doing as a young man with John Wesley and George Whitfield, and he had banished himself to America to live out his last days, only to rediscover his calling as a preacher. As John explained his first encounter with universalism, which will also give you a sense of what this was all about, he wrote, the veil was lifted from my heart. It was clear as any testimony in divine revelation that Christ Jesus died for all, for the sins of the whole world, for every man, etc., and that everyone for whom Christ died must finally be saved. I conceived if I had the opportunity of conversing with the whole world, the whole world would be convinced. It might truly be said that we had a taste of heaven below. Well, Judith, in 1774, was 23, the daughter of two of the most prominent families in Gloucester, the Sargents and Saunderses, and married to a ship owner and captain named John Stevens. She was bright, beautiful, inquisitive, largely self-educated, and among the group of universalists that met in her father, Winthrop Sargent's home, to discuss their new faith. 
In his autobiography, describing his arrival in Gloucester on that November day, John wrote, I had traveled from Maryland to New Hampshire without meeting a single individual who appeared to have the smallest idea of what I esteemed the truth as it is in Jesus. But to my great astonishment, there were a few persons, dwellers in that remote place upon whom the light of the gospel had more than dawned. The writings of Mr. Relly were not only in their hands, but in their hearts. John decided to make Gloucester his home and from now on, Judith's and John's lives would be forever intertwined, first as pastor and congregant. Again, we have no way of knowing what happened when they first met, but the meeting was clearly electric. In Judith's first letter to John Murray, which she made a copy of in her first letter book, Judith wrote to him, My dear sir, if I am not mistaken in the character of the person I have the pleasure to address, it will be most agreeable to him that I should lay aside all that awe and reverence which, is, which his unquestionable superiority demands and approach him with the freedom of a sister conversing with a brother whom she entirely esteems. I am not much accustomed to writing letters, especially to your sex, but if there be neither male nor female in the Emmanuel you promulgate, we may surely, and with the strictest propriety, mingle souls upon paper. I acknowledge a high sense of obligation to you, sir. I have been instructed by your scriptural investigations, and I have a grateful heart. Your revered friend, Mr. Relly, had taught me by his writings the rudiments of the redeeming plan, but you have enlarged my views, expanded my ideas, dissipated my doubts, and led me to anticipate and with sublime and solemn pleasure, the coming of the resurrection. I have to request, if your leisure time will allow, that you would honor me by a line, and I pray you to believe me with all sentiments of esteem, you are most obedient, etc., etc. And it is through Judith's letters, copied by her into letter books, which are simply blank volumes, just as we would create a journal, that I am able to tell you this story. To date, John Murray's personal correspondence has not been found and may have been burned by Judith. We do know that the letter I just read to you, this one pictured here, started a lengthy and voluminous correspondence that went on for many years. John wanted to know everything Judith was doing and <coughs> thinking, and she obliged often writing lengthy journal-style letters, starting a letter in the morning, adding to it throughout the day, and writing more the next day. 